Welcome to the Cunningham Piano Show, where we explore life between the keys. I'm your host, Hugh Sung, and I am so honored to have a phenomenal pianist here on the show. His name is Joshua Yudkin. Joshua, welcome. Hugh, it's such a pleasure always to come to Cunningham. Oh, we are so honored to have you here. So I'm wondering if you could share with us how you got started in music. Well, I came from a musical household. Ah, okay. Both of my parents were, my father was a clarinetist, my mother was an opera singer and a piano player. But neither of them played for a living. Oh, okay. So just, just for their own pleasure? They owned their own pleasure. They would be in the volunteer choirs and they, they were professional teachers, school teachers. Ah, okay. But they started me on classical piano at five. Wow. wow. Um, and for the next 12 years, I studied with an awesome, awesome European conservatory trained teacher named Mrs. Irene Beck mm -hmm. at the Settlement Music School in, mm -hmm. in Germantown. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got a huge background in, in Bach, Beethoven, uh, Liszt, Rachmaninoff. I practiced at least 20 minutes of scales, arpeggios, and Hannon every day. So you had the real foundational and... classical music exactly. training. Exactly. And then what? Well, that whole, sounds like your your life was all set for all set a classical to, <laughs> career, right? Except that's not what my parents wanted me to do. Ah. They saw that as supplementing and paying for, you know, going to medical school, ah. maybe law school, but medical school would have been nice, they said. And they, they wanted a, they said, a quote unquote safe career for yes, you. Yes, and okay. leave your options open. Right. So, that, so I went ahead with all that and I went to Penn State uh, for one year, <laughs> my freshman year. You can see where this is going. <laughs> and up there, I saw a lot of the world I hadn't seen. I saw a lot of people who played in coffee houses and played, and, and they had a lot more ambition and guts than they had any training or musical talent. And I would go, wait a minute, you know, I'm really trained in piano, and why aren't I doing this? Maybe I could do this, and I don't really want to spend my life studying all these things and, and then working so hard when I get out. And I came home that summer, 1976, and I answered an ad for a band, a club band, and that was it. I've been a professional full-time musician ever since. Wow, you turned down pre-med to follow your dream. Yes. Amazing. I'm wondering if you can help us understand what is it about the passion or the courage specifically? I mean, again, you, you were, you're highly trained. You should have had all the, the confidence and courage to play anything. What kind of courage are you referring to? Well, the courage to, um, to leave a traditional uh -huh. setting. Uh -huh. I'm the oldest of three sons. It was if you drop out of college, what's that going to look like for you? brothers were kind of an example and I said I don't know I better go live my life by myself now on my own and I did and then I went back and I studied jazz piano when I was 21 for another 12 years with Jimmy Amade Jimmy Amade he's a legendary jazz legendary player. teacher he recently passed away mm. I had a tremendous education from him I didn't know about jazz and jazz harmony and theory and jazz repertoire and Jimmy gave that all to me in an excellently structured way, um, very ap applicable. Every song that we studied was a song that you could play on a gig. Mm. So it was immediately very practical. Mm -hmm. And um, because I, wanted, I didn't want to uh, not work. If I was going to do this full time, I wanted to work. And I wanted to be prepared to play for any gig that came to me a singer, a jazz singer, uh, a court, jazz quartet, a rock band. Basically, I went into jazz so that I could understand progressive rock wow, better, cool. listening to Keith Emerson mm -hmm. <laughs> and Chick Corea and stuff. I, said, I had no idea how they thought harmonically, and I realized mm -hmm. that I didn't know it. Mm -hmm. And I realized I could sit and learn by rote the way everybody else in the bands I was doing was. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to figure out what those guys, how they wrote, you know, by wrote, I mean by listening. Yeah, and just the, and listening and copying per se. Per se. But right. I, I wanted to learn how they composed and the systems of thought that were in their minds mm. to come up with these things that were so impressive. To really understand the engine, 
the the what makes music work. Right, and I came core. to understand that jazz harmony is a evolved higher order. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's almost three dimensional compared to two dimensional of classical harmony and rock. That's which that's fascinating. Rock is wow. classical music. That's what's fascinating. I don't think I've ever heard anybody describe jazz harmony as three dimensional. Mm -hmm. That is a fascinating way of looking at like it. Like an XYZ axis compared to an XY axis. Wow, that is so mind blowing. Well, we could spend hours just talking on that, but you have some wonderful pieces you're going to play that you've actually composed yourself. You're quite the composer. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so what are you going to play for us? Well, the first song that I'm going to play is, is a little bit uh, lighter. It's called Acacia, and it dances around a lot of <clears throat> major sevens and beautiful structure that I put together. And I play the melody, and then I improvise over it, and then I play the melody again at the end. Mm -hmm. The second piece I'm playing is called The Ascension, and it's much more classical sounding. Uh, as I wrote it, I heard the parts of the orchestra in it. And that's why it's a pleasure to play such great pianos, because they help me bring out the, the sound of the, well, here's, you know, it could be the violas, and here's the, yeah. the cellos, and here's the basses, and here's the, the, you know, the horns. And, and, and speaking of pianos, again, one of the interesting things about this show is the fact that we do invite our, our artists to select the piano they want to perform on for the episode. In this case, you have chosen the Yamaha C2X. This is a beautiful piano. Why did you choose this one? This one stood out to me because of its response. Mm. It's very light. I'm, I'm a light player. So that I'm, I try to be dynamic. So when I play quietly, it's, th this brought out the, the piano. And then when I put fortissimo, it brought out the fortissimo. Even Very much more. the orchestral sound that you were and, describing in the second. Right, piece. I look for orchestral uh, relationship to the keyboard because mm. I compose orchestrally. Mm. Uh, it just actually helps me realize my vision of what I composed mm. when I play a piano like this. Well, let's hear you perform. Okay, I'd, I'd love to. Bye. 
listening to your music was so, so refreshing. I almost felt like I was in a musical whirlwind tour. I saw so many colors. I mean, the first one was delicate and, and, and like a breath of fresh air. And that second piece it really was majestic. And I, it, I heard the orchestra. I heard all of those different instruments and sounds and textures, and it had a certain majesty. I, I love the soundscape that you created. Thank you so much for sharing not only your performance, but your music, you. Thank you for sharing yourself with us. Thank you, Hugh. It's my pleasure. Now, I understand you've had some tremendous collaborations with some wonderful musicians. Can you share a little bit about them? Oh, gosh. I've, I've been <laughs> it's very fortunate to work with some amazing people. I did spend the summer working with Pat Martino, the great jazz guitarist, back around 1983. Wow. And uh, later on, I uh, collaborated with Teddy Pendergrass, the late singer, a wonderful soul mm. singer, Teddy mm. Pendergrass, and I co-wrote three songs on his 1997 album wow. called You and I. Mm. And I spent a lot of time with my friend Bill Miller. Bill Miller is a fantastic Native American singer-songwriter, plays the wooden flutes, and we share a Grammy. Bill got the Grammy for the 2004 Best Album, Best Native American Album of the Year, and we co-composed it and co-performed it. It's called Cedar Dream Songs. And uh, I've worked with Grover Washington in the past, uh, a lot of people, a lot of jazz people. Joshua, what an incredible life of courage that you've lived to not only apply yourself to what you love, but to pursue new and interesting and unique and courageous paths. That says a lot for any musician, but especially somebody like you, to be as brave as you've been. Thank you so thank much you. for having the courage to, to play this and write and to share your music with us. Well, thank you for letting me share it with you. Absolutely. What good is it if I can't share it? Very, very true. So thank you for watching and spending time with us. If you enjoyed this, be sure to subscribe so that we can let you know whenever we have new episodes. For The Cunningham Piano Show, I'm Hugh Sung. See you next time.